everyone, so welcome to this next session, which is all about keyword searching and indexing. Um, we have two presenters um, speaking today. Um, so the first is um, Roger Levan from the University of Rostock, and Roger is the leader of the Computational Intelligence Lab. And then the next speaker is Alejandro Tozzelli, and he's a researcher at the Pattern Recognition and Human Language Technology Research Centre at the University Polytechnic of Valencia. And they're both going to talk about their distance, different systems of um, keyword searching and um, spotting. So we'll hand over to um, Roger first. So thanks yeah. very much, Roger. Thanks, you. Hello, everybody. Yeah, I'm going to introduce keyword searching here in the context of Transcribos. And the idea of my talk is uh, really to uh, present to you a little bit uh, of the foundation of um, everything. We have a practical uh, demonstration in the tools uh, uh, section uh, tomorrow. And um, once we started uh, with the question uh, whether we really need a good, complete transcription of text for searching, and I will also introduce a new term following Günther's proposal of investigating texts. And at some point we saw that this is probably not necessary, or most likely not necessary, and came up with a new concept which I would like to introduce here, and also the application of this uh, new concept. Uh, I want you to learn a little bit our technology, just to make sure that when we talk to each other we understand also, so this is really a technical uh, talk um, from developer's side, and also maybe a little bit already knowing about configuration and behavior of these things, features, and maybe also bugs of uh, the software. Um, I would really like to remind you that our point of view is that what we are delivering here, also with Transcribos, but uh, in particular with the a uh, search engine is not an engine for execution of something which is ready, but it's much more a tool for continuously working on it. So uh, we would like to enable you to work with these tools and to improve while working. So you yourself have to adapt the tool and the whole machinery for specific challenges, and uh, in order to be able to do that, um, you have to understand it, of course, and you have to... Um, some will be able to interpret what comes out of the tool. And that's somehow the ambition of this talk. Okay, a little bit about foundation from technology point of view. Today, I start with the recognition engine as a whole, like as a black box. So the recognition engine produces something, and the something which we work with is a matrix of character confidences per position. And these scores, as I would like to call them while we speak about it here, come from some neural network or equally well from some hidden Markov model, uh, model output. And uh, we assume, mathematically we cannot prove, but we assume that these numbers estimate the probability of a character at a certain position. Uh, what you would like to do at the first glance is maybe choose the character per position which is most likely. And then you end up with some string in a sense, and we use these strings, of course. These are represented to you as a raw reading result, or you can also call it a free reading result. So there is nothing considered what's, about, what's known about the document context, for instance, or something about the time or the writer or something. It's just the machine reads, the engine reads, and you take the most likely character per position. And then from time to time, people apply this post-OCR correction thing. So you use external sources like what I mentioned already to improve the strings and say, okay, this is an error, detect the error, correct the error in the sense. Now we skip these two blocks of the workflow and we start not correcting and implementing the external sources or the knowledge, the external knowledge, only at this position where we already have ready strings but we start the same way, but start introducing, inserting into the whole workflow, the document context, one earlier at an earlier stage. And this earlier stage we used to call confmat, so used to this abbreviation that I would also like to use the word here in this talk today, which stands just uh, for the confidence matrix, as I said, these character confidences per position. And we try to evaluate the recognition information for the whole workflow already from the entire confidence matrix, which in turn means that you have to store it if you look at the same text once again. 
So uh, in the application case here, we store now these confidence matrices rather than strings as a reading result. Now decoding refers now to the process of getting out of these probability information some really string text which is readable to humans. Uh, we use it by additionally using the external uh, sources and what's all behind this is to find an optimal match or an optimal representation so to say between the query which you would like to dig out of the matrix and what's really in the matrix by these probabilities. And the outcome is some list of ranked alternatives so we present usually several possibilities which can be seen in the very same matrix. If you look at it from different point of views, it might pretty much be different, really different alternatives. So this is a graphical representation of what these confmats are, these confidence matrices. The darker, the more likely a certain letter is. So this is a handwritten string of a German, small German city close to my home city in the north of Germany. And as you see, for instance, here, the machine says very likely this is a B, so this is very dark. Let's say if we are around here, nobody really can know what it is, of course. If you do not know the name of the city, really, you would not be able to spell this out. And this already explains why, for instance, here it's not that dark. So the confidence metric says, okay, there is something around here, but I'm not sure. And... Uh, on the other hand, if I give you a list of German cities and I ask you to find out that particular city which is most likely hidden, coded in this matrix, then you will probably end up with the correct answer, right? So that makes a real huge difference between free reading, I don't know anything, compared to this decoding against certain queries. How close are strings, or how close is a string to a matrix? There is a well-known concept in computer science mathematics which is called a Levenstein distance, Russian mathematician. And I put it here very informal. For a distance, you count basically how many insertions of letters, deletions, or maybe even substitutions of letters you need. I'll show you an example in a second. The uh, main advantage of this approach is that there is an extremely efficient, very fast algorithm for doing it. So we can do it very, very often, very fast, and also in parallel on modern computers. And the idea always is the same. Find the optimal, we call it path, so the optimal representation, which is a path through this particular matrix. And uh, optimal means short, in a sense, how far are these things away? Or also cheapest, if you think about, I have to pay something for insertions and deletions, and people also used to talk about cost. You will always read, or very often read, the word cost in our representation. So uh, these are mathematically basically weights. Either it's a distance or it's cost, something. And counting these things means you add these costs. So here's a tiny little example. I'm not going to the, into the details. Everybody who knows this dynamic programming or Levenstein distance knows what it is. You can click at this demo if you have the PDF at one point. We provide it, of course. And here you see what I mean. This is a very easy representation of a matrix. And you walk through the matrix and pick up for instance, the way of changing the word Vienna, Wien, to the word wine. So in German, it's an example of one of my colleagues. I love it for the presentation here. So it cost me two. The distance of Vienna and wine in German is two. If you use substitutions, it's particularly easy. You just have to flip these letters. And now the, the whole story is all about the following. If my matrix says and I, let's say, is at the top-ranked position, so how much does it cost me to replace the I by the E? Rather than substitutions, you can also say replacement. It's also a term here. And now I add up. Of course, the W and the W, fine, cost zero. This costs something. Maybe here it's cost one. This costs something. Maybe it costs again one. In the general case, of course, there are some fractions. Uh, and again, this... Uh, uh, N here costs zero. And now you add up these things and you find the optimal path, the cheapest one, the closest one, which is uh, hidden in the matrix. So that's the whole story. Here's a matrix, here's a path, and here you see the final cost. And looking up these paths through the matrix, finding out of all these very, very, very many possibilities how you can travel from the left upper corner to the corner right down here, it's extremely fast by this what we call dynamic program. You think very often in terms of probabilities. Probability is a term in mathematics which is well-defined. 
confidences are not probabilities. So as a mathematician, I refuse to say probability. That's why we invented the confidence. When you think about things maybe between probability zero, impossible, and probability one, I'm completely sure. Now I introduce something like distance or cost, whatever. Those start with zero. I have to do nothing. I read the word Vienna, and there is the word Vienna. Nothing to pay. But these costs here, these distances, can be infinitely large. But you can change the word Vienna to the word Hamburg. Why not? It just costs maybe 10,000 or 20,000 or I don't know. So there is an essential difference between this scale and that scale. We calculate back and forth. And understanding this both scales is important because in our application, for instance, I guess mostly we talk about distances, but also people talk about these probabilities. Here are the mathematical functions. This is just a two, uh, power of e. This is a minus log, so minus log likelihoods. Maybe you have heard about it. Many people in computer science talk about it. And the major trouble here is that you have here an infinite scale, and this is only a tiny little finite piece, right? And so you have to fight with the case what to do with all these infinitely large costs, which again is practically very important for you because we make a cut here somewhere. But where to make the cut? We cannot say in advance. You have to dig this out from your experiments, from your experience, and this changes from data set to data set. So understanding this concept and deciding for themselves whether I talk about this distance measure or the probability measure and how you think for your own, uh, it's sort of up to you. That's what I mean with we have to learn it. We cannot present it as a ready-to-use uh, solution. How can we now use these solutions? Of course, there is a basic way. We just have text. We generate these conf mats, and we do it per line. So that's um, all about the story why you have to put these baselines there. The line is the basic structure in which we are thinking. The decoding engine then gets a query. I'm asking, is the word whatever hidden in the line? And we dig out the alternative answers ranked by some confidence distance, let's say, or probability, if you wish, whatever you calculate, right? <clears throat> the point is uh, confidences are no probabilities. That was a mathematician's part. I have to say that. Uh, the practical part is confidences and distances do not have an absolute meaning. It's very important for you. If you have one experiment and there's a distance 5, and another experiment there's a distance 5, these figure 5 can mean two completely different things, right? One 5 may be extremely large, the other 5 may be tiny. So, matter of experience and of, uh, uh, yeah, also of different experiments. So they are essentially incomparable, and you have to manually configure the whole thing and tune it. Yeah? There is no general solution for everything here in this case. The topic where you find these places always is threshold for something, where to cut the scale, for instance. But we can also now have different applications of this basic pattern. The classical one is string search. You put a query string in, you get the, out the distance to the query, and you just rank these queries. You have, of course, then big data issues because you can imagine now you do not have to search within strings. You have to search within these matrices, which are maybe a huge number of these things, right? The response time may be unacceptable. That's something you tell us when you start these experiments. Or maybe even it's necessary to have some pre-processing. We tried it. It's not so easy to have pre-processing. And our close colleagues from Valencia have a very, very impressive solution. And so... Thanks, Alejandro. I can now just only put the link here, so UPVLC will tell you this story uh, in the next talk. Thanks, God, for me. We have no very good solution for this at the moment. But we can make more than the usual way of asking things. We can, for instance, now again come back to the transcription by reading text. Then we put in not just one single word, but we put in an entire dictionary maybe dictionary with word frequency, something like this. In computer science, people used to say that's a language model. Don't think about it in terms of grammar and things like that. It's not really like that. It's mostly dictionaries, including these for word frequencies. So this is really at the edge of research to include more like grammar or things like that into this uh, area. And then decoding means compare all dictionary items against the conf line you have. 
And if you do it for all dictionary items, then you will have the most likely dictionary item meeting the reading result. And you say, okay, that's my reading result. And you would be uh, surprised where in the matrix the reading result sits. It's not on top. It's not maybe among the first 10,000 good possibilities, but it's in there. And that's the main advantage of this method. If you just exploit the top line, what we call best pass, then you lose all the other information of the matrix. And now the new idea is keep this information and use it also for decoding. So we get reasonable text alternatives, but now the criteria is that these are close to the confmat, so what I've been reading, and the language model, which is really a sensible, a meaningful answer in terms of language, meeting both criteria. You can somehow improve your result of reading text recognition by a good language model and vice versa. So people have very impressive results. When you put in a very good dictionary, the machine suddenly reach, reads things which you even yourself would not have expected, and vice versa. The only bad thing, if both your text recognition and your language model is poor, then, of course, we cannot do anything, right? Then, then it's bad. So um, what is the message? It's not really necessary to improve text recognition results like, like hell for years, Try with a good dictionary. Try to give the machine support in what the world of language is there in which you have to read the text. And if you, by this concept now, forget your first try and say, okay, now I have a new dictionary. I learned something more. There's new languages in it, more Latin words like only German or English or something. You can give it a new try. And you did not lose anything so far because all information sits in the confidence matrix, right? And then you look at the same text with your English eyes, get a result, with your German eyes, get a result, with your French eyes, get a result, without having a predefined string representation. The old way, giving first a German string, would never ever enable you to read it with English eyes, right? Then it's gone. The information is, is, <laughs> is gone. <laughs> okay. Investigating is a new point which we as I said, try to introduce here. The challenge, or well, there are several challenges, what I said before, is, for instance, that these language models uh, have to model fuzzy, dynamic, incomplete behavior of natural languages, of course. Also, the queries may be very complex in a sense that we try to ask the confmat very specific things, which are not just words. For instance, specific combinations, restriction to character classes, I mean just asking for figures, just asking for special letters or things like that. Or maybe even restrictive vocabulary, asking, tell me what German cities are in there or what Austrian cities, or I don't know, or first names or family names or something. So, I mean, a vocabulary which is sort of interest in, or my interest in that moment. This is pretty much well known in computer science by the term regular expression. So there is no definition really which I can present here. Regular expression is a certain syntax of describing things. So if, if you know these things, then it's easy. If you don't know, I will not be able to teach it uh, within two minutes or something. So just to give you a sort of glance of it. For instance, if you try to encode a four-digit year... You know maybe it starts with a 1 and not with a 2, like historic or text, I don't know. And you have then three of these letters, and you may be aware of this um, kind of coding it in Excel or things like that, of these Microsoft programs, and many more use it. And the regular expression would be like we have a 1 here, and then one character out of the class 0 to 9, the digits, and so on and so on. And you have these three digits. There's an abbreviation with these curly brackets here. And so the syntax of regular expressions is really mighty. It's, it's a completely mighty tool. We do not support everything, but we support a certain basis. And now you can ask for these things, for instance. And I guess I put here something which is, oh, it's exactly that one. Uh, this is transcribus, and it uh, points you to the answer, for instance, the 2000 here. And now we are shocked. There's a 2000, and it shows a 1800, and... Indeed, I guess it's 1,800 here in the original lines. It's just a screenshot of transcribus. And once again, if you now do not wonder about the situation, then you understood everything right, because the 2,000 is just the best pass. That's what the string representation pretends to be there. But in fact, there was a 1,800. And now if I ask the confidence matrix, is there maybe a figure of the type 1 and 3 digit? The confidence metric says, yeah, it is. It's just not the best one, but it's there in there. 
And you see, if you once have the 2000, you will never be able to track back to the 1800 here. It's hidden, it's gone. But if you now dig out information from the confidence matrix, you see the machine finds it, right? There is no 2000. There is, in fact, really a 1800, right? So that's the idea here. These terms can be very complicated. I leave it here just within the talk. If you look at it and know it, uh, for instance, this codes the complete data of this type, and you can have very complicated terms, and uh, then you have surprising answers from the machinery. This irregular expression decoding takes in transcribers, for instance, for 388 pages of the uh, Zürich Staatsarchiv data set, about 40 seconds, so this may, you may consider long or not long, you know that it's not the end of what we can do. Günther already mentioned, no, Philip, I guess, mentioned that um, they applied for new uh, hardware there. So, for instance, in the moment, massive parallelization on CPU and GPU is a point, the work of the day, our daily work in a sense. So there will be really a huge gain in time within the next few months and, uh, yeah, I guess next few months particularly sticking on these graphical processing units. Just to give you another impression, on a just uh, ordinary laptop, not on this one, on the one we had before, like uh, 433 Benson pages, which we used in many of these collections in uh, contests, two to three seconds average. And if you want to, just for searching, if you read a complete page and have an 11,000 words in a dictionary, which already, I guess, is reasonable, it takes eight to nine seconds for reading the entire page, right, comparing it, you know. And um, I don't remember whether this was, I guess it was English dictionary also from, from the Benson. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess my time is over and I should um, leave you out with some questions, not questions in the sense of testing it, but uh, what I would expect from the audience in this, <laughs> this time, um, whether we work on realistic uh, questions, don't answer this immediately, try it at first, and then at some point tell us whether this type of query, these new possibilities, are something you would like to use. What is the realistic size of the data corpus? Alejandro will speak about huge corpora. I spoke about fairly small corpora, because if you put a very complicated question, you can imagine yourself uh, that it's not... A, a, I mean, you cannot do it in realistic time for the whole library or the whole archive. Of, okay, there's a trade-off between these things, complexity of the data set and complexity of the question. And what, for instance, is a realistic query response time? If we say, okay, in 30 seconds you have the answer, is it okay? Or do you expect more? Or is it arbitrary? Yeah, as usual, I would like to thank my team, which is very important in Rostock. So I didn't make any work of this. It's all been done by my young, young colleagues, and uh, in particular the one who is here now has in parallel the other talk. Our sister company is Small SME, which works together very much with us, and this MOU partner and the project, of course. And nevertheless, whom can I see here? Luis and Maria from pre preparing this wonderful workshop here. I know they do a marvelous job within Reed with the um, uh, with the dissemination uh, group, as we call it. And I guess it's uh, uh, very much time to thank you, particularly both you and also Eva and all these other people, for doing such a marvelous job. And uh, finally, of course, I thank you all for your attention. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, have you got any questions for Roger? Gunter, do you want to say something about when keyword spotting is coming to transfer? Yeah, actually, uh, I should note that response time is not as you would expect for a search service, but we believe that we can do it as a job. And this means that you would uh, get an answer that you are searching in a large collection and you get an answer maybe after an hour or maybe after a day. But, um, but the job is stored and therefore nothing is lost and you can always open your old queries and work with them. Uh, and the, 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 actually the last snapshot version already includes uh, keyword spotting. And uh, the next release will include it, so probably next week or maybe two weeks, whatever. And then every document where HDR is applied can also be searched with keyword spotting. Yeah. <coughs> there are one question on the matrices, the confidence matrix. Uh, if many, when you do the text OCR and you get this big large matrix, and then you do, consider using the dictionary, 
I wonder if you very could think also that they have some craft and tactics. Let's say that there are certain combinations of ethics that are impossible, let's say, in all European languages, so you could, let's say, that reduce the matrix, the size of the matrix, in order to speed up searches, for example. Uh, we wouldn't do that, but we thought about it. But uh, this contradicts a little bit the idea of having the capability of asking the matrix within, let's say, different sheds of light. So if you, for instance, restrict your matrix, because you know in German you would have the no, S... No, I'm not thinking about German, but then it would be the European languages. Yeah, so but then... Switch it, between, uh, the question is, how much can you reduce the matrix in order to improve it? the response time. Uh, so you, you won't destroy it with respect to Norwegian, English, German, French. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we didn't do it uh, like this. We reduced the size of the matrix because you have here in the matrix plenty of zeros or almost zeros. So the reduction is more in terms of there are many possibilities which are not really there at a certain position. So the other thing, at least as far as I understood your question, would already demand or require domain knowledge somehow, which is not in a sense, not our job, right? So we do not have it, in a sense. So if you do have it, and at some point we have the requirement to say, okay, we put more in, and you give us a complete set, let's say, or a set of rules we should observe coming from European languages, and you agree on it, then we can try. But um, we don't have these rules at the moment, and it's not, not our part. So um, I, would, I would probably, from a technological point of view, go more for the direction... Um, keeping the confirmant as it is, store it like it is complete, and then leave it to the user, putting the knowledge, the domain knowledge, into the dictionary thing, into the language model, and then apply it. So we have more like what we call like a, a cut, in a sense, um, uh, on this uh, confirmant side. Okay, I think because of time we have to leave it there, but I'm sure Roger will be happy to talk to people over sure. lunch more. Um, so let's thank Roger again and welcome Alejandro to the stage. Okay. Hello everybody, I'm Alejandro Toselli, I work in Radio by Gunter, previously. So I will talk a bit about keyboard spotting, large scale documents, similar to um, talk, the talk of Roger. The only thing here, we follow another kind of approach. This approach is rather than computing the spot confidence on the fly. We actually compute first an index and then try, we work directly on that index hmm, to show the spotting words. So, I will give some overview about the motivation of the work. We will we'll give some overview of the probability framework we are using to do that. Then I will describe a bit of the system, workflow we are, we are employing to produce the index. And also I will show two, two demonstrators, our lib demonstrator, final conclusion. We all know there is a massive test image collection, which has available all over the world, which were compiled by libraries, archives, and other cultural institutions. And we know most of this material, practical, is inaccessible, because we don't have transcripts of such material, and this makes impossible the material be searchable hmm, for, for some engines. So, in the case a perfect transcript will be available for such material, of course we, we can access to this material, we could make plain text index to make access to such documents. Hmm. Look for <coughs> uh, textual information on that document. But of course we don't know that transcribe this such material is expensive. Actually, we need a special people uh, with a lot of experience to recognize the such kind of, of letter to, to have some ground through. And also, in the case of using computer assisted transcription system, it also is expensive too. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you use the automatic transcription of, uh, um, of a handwriting type recognition system and using this transcript to, per to, to make some search on the page, we will, we will have some error, of course, because the handwritten test recognition is, is not error-free, and the performance of the search system is, will, be, will be poor. Hmm? So in this case, we are facing this problem using indexing and textual search using a probabilistic index. We will show how we, we build in the next page. Hmm? So this is the approach. Imagine we have an image 
a right hand text image in the bottom, and on the top we have a, a, a kind of probabilistic map. In this case, this probabilistic, probabilistic map belongs to the word matter. Here. And of course, it is it will be wishable than, for example, the location. We have three instances of the word matter, and the corresponding high probability is we can observe here. This is, a, this is an interesting thing, and also, for example, the word matters with S has a low probability. Mm -hmm. we, have, because we are interested to look directly matter. Mm -hmm. How we, we can obtain this probability map? In this case, we, are, we, can, we can obtain this using uh, an isolated word classifier, for example. We take into account the context, all the, uh, the words surrounding the, 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 the word we are looking for. So, of course, for example, the, the, the word it could be helped to recognize the, the following word matters hmm? because of the is. So, in this case, because we are looking the matter, in this case, we know the context of the, so, of course, we make more sure that these words matter, so no matter. Hmm? So, using, uh, using this, uh, this kind of index is very prohibitive. See, if we want to, to incorporate this map in the index because First, take a lot of uh, com take a lot of computing time, of course, and also we take a lot of uh, space storage to uh, to keep this this map in memory. Mm -hmm. So the the one thing we can to 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 do to to solve this problem is directly we use another kind of structure. It's called word lattice. We are obtaining from the, uh, for, from the, the coding process itself, and directly from this confidence map, uh, from this uh, word lattice, we compute directly the, probab the relevant probability of each of the word in questions, and also the possible location of that. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the word lattice are obtained directly from using the confidence matrix. In the case we use a recurrent neural network plus the language model. Mm -hmm. So the recognition of this word of this of this word. And the probabilistic, in this case, are taking account the language model plus the optical modeling given by the recurrent neural nerve or, in the other case, by HMMs, hidden Markov models. So, as I say, in this way we can build some kind of index. For example, we can index all the, all the, the text like image regions as, and we call this kind of index. Hmm? In the first column we have the word, with, which is indexing the relevant probability associated to that word, and also the coordinate in the image, which is the, the possible location of that word. Mm -hmm. Of course, here we have a lot of possible words, not only the ones that are, are really appear in the image, but also a lot of similar words. But it is expected that other words have less probability since the word not really appear in the image. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing, we have to mention about this. See if we can have this e kind of index, then it's easy then it's easy then to look for the words in, in, in the whole searchable way. We can look for any word and also we can make for example regular expressions. We are, we can combine this query for example for, for look for kind of concept. For example look using Boolean co Boolean expression to combine different ways this word and make the, the search more powerful. Huh? In this way, we can look for concepts, not only for the words. Maybe for see if we have to look in, in 83,000 images for some kind of concept. See if we are smart, we can combine the word in such a way we can to find this, the, the page we are looking for. So, more or less, this is the, the, the indexing diagram we are applying, the workflow. We start with the text image, XML page, for example, and the image. Then we apply the keyword pointing indexing tool. This actually is compounded by the HDR recognition engine, but it, it could be a recurrent neural network on HMMA, plus a word lattice tool. And we, we, we are not only uh, trying to, to record in the best hypothesis, but more or less, rather than the best end, the, the coding hypothesis. Hmm? So we take in account not only the best pass, you know, the end best pass that, take, that can explain the word. In this way, we can 
normalize the world along all the possibilities and we have in this case better uh, relevant probabilities. Mm -hmm. After that, the page level index are processing, we call ingestion. In this case, for example, we can convert this index in lemmas. Lemmas are, in, instead of, lo of looking for the all indexing for of the word, we are looking directly for the lemmas mm -hmm. that give more, for example, uh, more more for look for concepts than in Latin, for example, there are many de 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 declinations. So in this way, we replace all the possible declinations by the lemma, corresponding lemma, and in this way we can directly look for the lemma. And also, of course, in this, in this, in this, in this stage, we, for example, we replace all the characters by uppercase, we remove the acritics because it's not, are not useful for typing, uh, to make easier the the, the Wii interface, and finally, the keyword search is in charge to, to analyze the query, to, it's a, a kind of parser, so if we use a Boolean expression, we can separate what operation is applied, etc. And finally, this is, and also it's responsible to show the, the results with the corresponding confidence score, etc. Before we follow on, we want to talk a bit about the way we measure the performance of, that, of such system. We actually use the recall precision performance, in this case. For example, we know, all know the precision is high enough since most of the retrieve, of the retrieve results are correct, and recall is high since most of the existing correct results are retrieved. Mm -hmm. Of course, see if we, for example, for some image, we have all the perfect transcript and look for in that in such image, the point, corresponding point of precision recall will be here. Mm -hmm. It's the, be the best possible <coughs> performance, it's 100. Mm -hmm. you know? The area, and this plot is one. Mm -hmm. In case, for example, we use the automatic handwriting test recognition system, only the one best hypothesis, for example, uh, of course, is er is no error uh, is no error free. We will the person will be lower, and um, for example, one point will be here. So, and the, the area and this and this area is, be is is less than one, of course. Mm -hmm. In case in the in the probability index, we are we are focused now right now, practically define a kind of cure. Mm -hmm. As, as we can see here, in that case, this makes the, the search, of course, when this curve is approximated to, to that point, it's better, the, the, the performance system. But this makes the, the system more flexible. Hmm? For example, the user can decide the recall and precision for which he wants to obtain the results. Hmm? See, for example, see apply a very, the, the, the threshold very high, we are all the all the retrieved results are pr practically we want we want high probability near to one. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are not all all possible. And if we go the, go down the the threshold, the retrieved results are are many of them, but probably they the recall will be near to one. Mm -hmm. So now I'll talk a bit about the one of the the. The demonstrator, we we have applied this index approach. Was in the first one. It was in Passau dataset. It's about uh, 14th, 18th century collection of historical records. I think 26,000 images written German, most of them. And um, we ha we have done some preliminary experiment in 200, 291 page image. We have used. 200 in, in this case for, for training and 91 for test. Of course, most of these collections are, um, are tabled, of course. One thing here is the text line detection has been supervised uh, made. Mm -hmm. This is one of the things. And also, we have to realize that the lines are very short, and so the language model don't have, some muy, don't have a lot of effect in improving this, in this case, the, the, the spotting performance. Mm -hmm. This is a, anyway, this is a recall precision curve we have obtained in, in this data set in the 91 page. It's a, the average precision is around 0 0.7, 70%. The mean average precision is uh, practically 7, 6, 7%. Um, of course, the diacritic, we, uh, the evaluated keyword is about 5,000 uh, 5, 5, words, and without considering punctuation mark and uppercase. 
Um, of course, in this case, we, instead of we uh, ah, this is one important thing. We are not working exactly with word lattice. We are working with character lattice. Yes, in this case, all the indexes is lexicon free. We don't use any kind of dictionary. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we can look for any word we we, we want. Of course, if one word is not found in the in the index, it's probably that this word not appear actually in the image. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you can try this demo in, the, in such direction. I give some possible to look for some words. Okay, for example, here we are looking for the, the combination. This is or combination. For example, we are looking for the word, in this case, we don't apply lemmatization in this case. We are looking for the word AT. So, in this, in this query, we can write all the possible ways we can, we can write a preview. For example, see if we look at this in the interface, it shows all the possibilities. These are all the page. One is looking any of the word attributes. For example, this is the query. Also, we have here in this page uh, appear two, two instances of the word April in one of these words, at least, these six words. Mm -hmm. See so if we look inside, for example. So can recognize, someone can recognize the word April is here. Another kind of, for example, Margaret, another word, combined word between all, all the ways you, you, you can write Margaret. It's very useful to find some information. Hmm? For example, also we can use and combination. We are looking directly for, for page and contain Joseph and Maria. Hmm? And also we can also, for example, Look for pages that you are, you are looking Joan and Anna, and this AR, hmm? kind of express, uh, Boolean expressions. Hmm? Of course, also it is possible directly to look for phrase, hmm? Anne and Maria. Hmm? We use a uh, bread square bracket. In this case, the system knows you are looking directly for sequence that contains these two, one at the side. Hmm? Okay. Another index we are applying in the Chancery. This is another project, of course. It's from the 14th and 15th century. It's a medium manuscript from the, from the French Royal Chancery. Actually, the number of volumes in that, what is it, is 167. The number of pages, practically. In this case, the last release is about 83,000 pages per index in such collection. You are look and the estimate number of running words for millions, number of star different star spots in the index is about 28 millions. And this is the typical query response time is practically less than 100 milliseconds. Hmm? Look for a, a word in the whole, in the 83,000 page. And one remark here is the text line detection in, the, in such collection has been the extraction is, was, was made full automatically, practically. Hmm? This is the. This is of course experiment lab experiments. This is the, the red one correspond to the full index. The directly in, in was evaluated in, in sorry ninety five page, while the the blue one correspond only to search for abbreviation. This collection only is part is in Latin and, and the other part is in French of course, and there are many abbreviations. Here this the address you can find this collection is in Imanis. Of course there, you can do many words. But uh, about the abbreviations, we found, you know, most of the part of this, of the Chancery collection was written in Latin. There are many abbreviations. Hmm? For example, the nice things you can search for directly for the full, the expanded version of the word, and the system retrieve all the, all, all the words be abbreviated or no. Hmm? For example, if you look for the, the word Guillaume, this is the full form. There are some pages that have the full form, and another page that is directly the abbreviated form. And find everything. Hmm? Chevalier, Libre, and Colombia. The nice thing is you only directly look at the modernized version of such words. Hmm? So, to finish this talk, a prolific framework has been introduced. Uh, this, this, the collection of transparent information text document. We show some empirical results in two, in two historic collections with different, of course, complexity levels. Um, two demonstrators have been available. You can play with them. And also, the, the best thing is the abbreviation and all the difficulties in type historical manuscript can be overcome. Directly, you can look for the search for the modernized version, or also train using the modern version, and the system retrieves all 
be abbreviated or not, the possible words and match the query you, you are looking for. So thank you for your Alejandro, thank you. Um, are there any questions for Alejandro? Yeah. Yes, I, I wonder if you're going to do the, the class search, if you do expansion of the definition class, you search for the, for the root. Yes. How do you do that? So, so you do the expansion. Yes, in this case, for make the lemmatization, of course, we are using dictionaries, special dictionaries. We are group all the words, the different, different inflecting forms of the word, are replaced by the, using the, of course, the dictionary by the, the root version of that, of that uh, inflected form. Hmm? So, in the case of Macter, the first example of that, do you then get, uh, get the natural Macter or do you expand Macter into Macters? Uh, yes. Uh, so no, we look. Also for Macters. Yeah, yes. Yeah, the way we do that, we take the index, um, look for all the possible words, uh, all, the, all the words and re, uh, are in the, the spot in the index, and put on the side which is the dilemma of such word. After we have two index, another interest, the, the inflective form and the corresponding lemma. So it's easy to then to, to see yeah. if we can look for the inflective form or the lemma hmm, directly. Can you say something about is it if a machine spots a word that's wrong, can you correct it and feed those corrections back in so it learns what what it's that? wrong? Yeah. When it finds a result and yeah. the result is wrong. Ah, yes, yes. We have implemented, for example, uh, let me see, for example, say you look for another word here, for example, in this table, for example, to here you have an spot. And you can, for example, say if this word is correct or not. So you are sure in this way we are protruded this yes. point. Another way to do that, for example, you can click everywhere in the page, for example, in that point here, for example, so pop up a window and say all the possible words that are recognized there, for example, enrichment, all the possibilities. Oh, okay. You can choose the correct one, <laughs> or maybe give some idea what is written in that, in that position. Hmm? That's good, so it can learn even more. Um, we better leave it there because I think we need to go back upstairs for the next session, but um, join me in thanking Alejandro and Roger once again. Okay.